Hello, Dr. Mindy Curry here. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I do house calls in the greater Portland area and I have a small office in Milwaukee. And I'm bringing you out to my land in Southwest Washington today to show you my little patch of nettles that's right behind me. And uh, I'm gonna harvest some of these nettles and make it into a delicious creamy nettle bisque, which is a wonderful soup and a great uh, way to get all of nature's spring tonic goodness into you through stinging nettles. It also has excellent health benefits. So let's take a look at this patch here. Here they are. Those are, that's a, a beautiful spring nettles. Here's a patch. I've done some harvesting on this one already. You can kind of repeat crop this, top the heads off. They'll grow back in a couple weeks. And you can harvest more. That's what I'm doing here. This little lovely patch of spring nettles. These will grow quite tall. But for now, they're just a reasonable, manageable size. Lovely nettles. It's a lovely little place I've got here, next to a river. Got uh, <laughs> Ruby coming in there to make a cameo. In any case, these are stinging nettles. These nettle plants do bite. If you look really close, you can see little hairs. And those little hairs are little stingers. But there is a little trick in that they have to be triggered first. The first touch is free, the second touch they will bite you. And some people get a very nasty reaction to these guys. A real bad welts, a lot of pain, can last for several days. So most people want to avoid these. Other people find that they can use that, uh, that bit of a stinger to just wipe out all the substance P in a achy joint or muscle and uh, actually use it to relieve pain, basically by causing so much pain initially that all your pain juices are gone and you feel less pain for a little while. So some people will actually put that on their joints on purpose. Today we are mainly going to take these spring greens. You want the spring ones, not later on because there be much tougher and not very delicious, much stronger in flavor. These young spring greens, more delightful in flavor, tender. These are the ones you want. And like I said, you can continue to harvest these for quite a while just by topping them and then coming back and topping them again. Here's a nice undisturbed patch of nettles. This one's quite tall. Still, still going to have a nice tender top at this point, but much taller and it'll be a little past. Look at them. Now these have a square stem, heart-shaped leaf with a lot of wrinkles on them. You can see up close little vicious hairs. Very upright. Um, the leaves are opposite each other and then opposite in the next whirl. That is a nice little stinging nettle there. Now stinging nettles, they are of the species Urtica. And in fact, there's six different subspecies, including Urtica dioica, its relative Urtica urens, uh, various hybrids. These are all good for souping. These are all, um, Urtica species are originally found in the colder regions of Europe and Asia, but now it grows all over the world. And it especially likes nitrogen-rich, moist soils, often nearby to water sources. Um, this is used popularly for hay fever, allergic rhinitis, and general allergy conditions. 
Um, there have been small studies which have shown nettles to be effective in relieving allergies from seasonal pollens, uh, potentially as, in, as effective as some conventional allergy medications. Nettles actually reduce the histamine reaction to the allergens, which blunts the associated mucus, sniffles, and itchy irritation in the eyes and the skin. Uh, European traditions also use this as a diuretic to reduce fluid buildup and for joint pains. Okay, we're going to do a harvest. Now, most of you people are going to want to do that with gloves. I repeat, harvest with gloves. But uh, I'm going to use my little trick, and I am actually looking for a little bit of the topical um, healing. So I'm just going to do it without gloves. I can pick this. I'm not singing yet. Watch out for bugs. Until you know how you react to seeing nettles, definitely use gloves first. I don't have a very strong reaction, so I do use these on my joints. My hand is hurting me a little bit today because I did a bit of harvesting. Whew. Oh, now that bites. A little too much harvesting yesterday of other things. So I'm going to just put a little bit of that on my joints, but don't do that unless you know how you react to seeing nettles, because these are vicious. And I'm a little crazy. <laughs> that basically just makes it so painful that there isn't enough to cause pain in the future. It hurts. I'll admit it. Definitely hurts. Here's a little pot of singing nettles, though. We can make some soup. Nope. Let's dive a little bit deeper into these stingers. They are very painful to the touch. Basically, this plant is covered in tiny hairs, and when you, your first touch kind of loads the stinger, your subsequent uh, touch is the trigger for the painful injection of these chemicals. These tiny hairs are called trichomes, and each hair is like a little tiny needle, and it's filled with various compounds such as formic acid, which is the same chemical that are in fire ants in their bites. It's also got histamine, acetylcholine, tartaric acid, oxalic acid, serotonin. Basically, all these things come together to be pretty nasty. If you get stung and you just can't handle it, you're going to want to wash with soap to remove the stingers as soon as possible. You can also, if you look around, find a plant called dock and, and crush up some dock leaves and put that onto your sting. Otherwise, antihistamine creams, calamine lotion, that kind of thing. The sting, the primary source of pain from the sting, used to be considered the formic acid in there, the same stuff that the fire ants bite with. But it's actually at too low of a concentration to explain this completely, the prolonged pain and welts that some people get from these stinging nettles. Currently, the understanding is that... Um, Inflammation causing histamine and acetylcholine and serotonin, which is acts like an irritant to the skin. All these are the real cause of the inflammation and prolonged pain. Um, other acids, the tartaric acid, the oxalic acid, they can be found in various concentrations in different subspecies and actually extend the pain even longer. If you <laughs> fun stuff there. Okay, let's take our nettles back to the kitchen. And here we are. We've got basically a grocery bag of spring nettles. We've got uh, two medium onions, 
about three to five stalks of celery, including the tops, five Murasaki sweet potatoes, or really any potato of your choice, uh, one sprig of young lavage, that's kind of super celery herb style, well, half a bunch of parsley, fresh parsley, one bay leaf, a teaspoon of fresh thyme, four cloves of garlic, when I have two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of butter, salt and pepper to taste, four cups of bone broth concentrate. I've got a video on that if you want to know how to make that. One tablespoon lemon juice and one cup of whipping cream, or in this case a box of Trader Joe's shelf-stable whipping cream. And that is our recipe for making the creamy nettles bisque soup. And once again, I can't uh, emphasize enough that most of you guys are going to want to use gloves. Maybe even thicker gloves than this, but this will do for most of the needles. They can get in these a little bit. But basically, when you cook by boiling or steaming or even by uh, fine grinding or pulverizing, this all deactivates the nettle sting. Um, the blender will break all the little needle-like hairs, rendering the nettles edible and unable to sting your mouth or throat. And that's a really great thing. Um, one more thing to comment about is that you really want to harvest only from uncontaminated lands. This plant does tend to bioaccumulate minerals such as heavy metals and other contaminants and toxic soils. So studies on nettles grown in contaminated soils have found high or increased concentrations of arsenic and lead than in those nettles that are harvested from really pristine soils. So uh, the habitat does matter. The nettles, their action is generally considered to be astringent, diuretic, anti-inflammatory. It can bind sex hormone binding globulin and inhibit aromatase reducing the conversion of androgens to estrogens. Generally, it's used for painful muscles and joints and arthritis. Um, these things, the muscles, joints, arthritis would be a, a topical um, use. So for arthritis, some people even found that taking it orally can reduce the dosage needed of NSAIDs to relieve pain. Um, so for these painful muscles and joints, you can apply the nettles Topically, basically just whacking your joint with the stinging nettle itself, the fresh stinging nettle. And this quickly uses up the substance P or the inflammatory pain chemicals. For up to a few days, you might actually feel less joint pain if you can tolerate the stinging pain to begin with. This is due to a disruption in the pain signaling, and it's what's called a counter irritant effect. Um, people do use the root for urinary problems, especially during the early stages of enlarged prostate, um, to if they're having problems with reduced flow or incomplete emptying. Um, an enlarged prostate is called BPH or benign prosthetic hyperplasia. It can also be used for urinary tract infections. Um, People have also used nettles for gout and anemia and diabetes mellitus, also for the treatment of scurvy and for eczema, um, for nosebleeds. It's very astringent and has even been used to help resolve general hemorrhaging, internal bleeding anywhere in the body, including uterine hemorrhages. The constituents, the Nettles is like a superfood. It's like nature's multivitamin. And it has many great constituents, including chlorophyll, fiber, iron, vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin K, uh, B vitamins, glucoquinine, beta carotene, calcium, magnesium, silicon, potassium, manganese, zinc, copper, chromium. Uh, as well as a variety of flavonoids and phenolic acids. It's basically a string tonic that can strengthen and support the whole body. It's a great thing. 
Okay, so what I've been doing is basically processing these nettles, basically just cutting off the bigger bits of the stem, um, washing them. Just want the tender tops and the tender bits of stem. Also then I've peeled the sweet potato, chopped up all the different vegetables. Now ultimately we're going to be cooking up these vegetables in a big pot and then pureeing everything. So our chunks don't need to be too fine. We're just chopping those up to a, a good manageable size. We're initially going to saute the vegetables so you want them to be small enough to where everybody can mingle together and become translucent and beautiful. Let's get our vegetables over to the stovetop. Here it is. Get our burner on uh, medium, say. Let's uh, drop in the oil and the butter and then toss in, um, well, let's melt that down, <laughs> of course, and then toss in our vegetables. This is the onions, the celery, also the ginger, um, <laughs> the lavage and the garlic. Stir that all together, get that going nicely, and then just kind of add some salt and pepper to taste. Pepper, pepper, pepper. Pepper is a good, delightful herb that actually increases the uptake of vitamins and minerals, so it's good to add. Well, it increases the uptake of vitamins, definitely. There we are. We're just uh, sauteing our bits of vegetable. There it is. We've got them nice and golden. Make sure they don't stick to the pan or burn. But then it's time to go ahead and add in the sweet potatoes. Toss those little guys in there. Everybody in the pot. And lastly, the bay leaf and thyme. I've got it tied up there so it'll be easy to take out. Also pour in the bone broth. That's four cups of bone broth concentrate. Add in an equal amount of water and just get all that stuff nice and boiling. Okay, we've got all that stuff boiling. We've let it simmer for oh, about 10 minutes until the sweet potatoes are more tender. Let's add the nettles in there. Just go ahead and toss the nettles. You're probably going to want to do that with gloves. I am enjoying quite a number of stings here. Go ahead and stir that all together. Add in the lemon juice. And let's just stir that all around. Oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> a big cauldron of nettle and sweet potatoes. Mmm. 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 <laughs> it looks quite chunky and quite scary right now. We've let that cook down until it's all tender, and now I'm adding in another four cups of ice cubes just to stop the cooking process and try to cool that off a little bit. <clears throat> Ultimately, I'm going to be pureeing this, so I want to cool it down as quick as possible. Here I am adding in the box of cream, whipping cream, right at the end. don't need the cream to really heat up or possibly scald on the bottom, so I'm going to get it at the end because I know I'm going to go and put that into the food processor, so I'm not worried about it. Let's take out that bay leaf. That's a bay leaf with thyme, stem, and string. Don't need that in the food processor. Remember to take out your bay leaf or you'll end up with a kind of a chewier situation, I guess. Probably okay in the end, but much stronger flavor if you leave that in. Okay, <clears throat> we've got that cooled down a little bit, at least enough to where we're probably not going to burn ourselves. You might want to 
take extra time and get it all the way to cool, but I go a little fast. It's still a little bit warm, but definitely not boiling anymore. Let's go ahead and puree that up real good. Don't, don't blow up. <laughs> Leave a little bit of a vent space, but also you don't want to blow up into your kitchen. Doing hot liquids can be very unsafe, so I would definitely say cool it down more than I have probably. But if you do do a warm puree, give it a little space to, to grow. Brrr, there it goes. And it's a lovely looking puree now, isn't it? Almost like baby food. Ooh, yeah, let's get it to that completely pulverized state. Oh, look at those little nettles go. Every one of those little stingers is being deactivated. <clears throat> They're kind of like little glass tubes. And the first time you touch them, you break the little glass tube, and then it has a little sharp end. Then it can stick you. But when you've pulverized it and cooked it like this, all that stuff is just gone. <clears throat> it's now totally safe to consume without any worry about those stinging nettles affecting your oral mucosa or your stomach lining or digestive tract. It is good to go and it is very delightful. I'm putting a little hot sauce on there because I like everything a little bit spicy. That is a creamy nettles bisque soup. And, oh, oh yeah, it's very delicious. Oh, oh, oh so good. I could just slurp this up. <laughs> so now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> So don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.